Hey, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix converging lines with three different methods. You can actually go to the link in the description and download it and work alongside the video. We're gonna make this image look like this one, which is one method. Do the adaptive camera wide angle, which is gonna give us some transparent areas that we would either need to content aware fill or crop out. And then we're going to get the ACR geometry, which is Adobe Camera Raw. And then typically for me, that one tends to narrow things a little much. So I tend to like to just stretch that out a little more to make it look more like the original. So you know the question. Are you ready? It's Photoshop time and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? All right, so we're in Photoshop and we're looking at the image and converging lines, that's when two parallel lines, like the sides of a building, appear to merge towards each other as you look up toward the top of a building. This happens a lot with wide angle lenses and pretty much always happens when you tilt your camera up. And sometimes this effect can be very pleasing, but sometimes it can be distracting. Like here, let's say, obviously these columns are severely tilted up, right? So here's a manual way to fix it. Yes! Manual crop and drag to taste. If it's a small correction. I'm gonna hit Command or Control minus just to shrink this in the viewing screen for us. And let me go to the very background, hit Command or Control J to duplicate it. Now I'm gonna hit Command or Control T to activate free transform. And then I'm gonna hold down the Command on Mac, Control on Windows. And I'm just gonna grab this outside corner and try to straighten that up manually just by dragging it straight out to the side. Now currently I don't know exactly what is vertical. So activate your rulers. You can go up to view and put a check mark beside rulers or you can hit Command or Control R Mine are already up, so I just need to hover over them, click and drag, even though I'm in the middle of an active transformation, I can still drag my guides over from the rulers. Go in there, I'll put one on this side, and then I'll pull one from the top to check the levelness of it. So now I have a reference point just to visually look and see, does it look like it's lining up? Hold down the Commander Control key again and kind of drag to taste. Thing up there. Now let's straighten up this one. And I'm starting at the top only because that's where the biggest part of the lean is occurring. And I just want to stretch that lean over by grabbing that point and dragging it over. And everything's a compromise. This isn't like a perfect geometric fix, but it's it's doing a pretty good job. As far as the level, I don't see, let me hover over that guy to drag it down. The level looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna hit enter and then I'll go up to view and clear guides, man zero to fit in screen. And I'll toggle off to see the background. So here's where we were and here's where we are. So overall, this is a reasonable fix. So I'm gonna turn that off, go back to the background, hit Command or Control J, pull that to the top. So let's try to fix it with the adaptive camera wide angle. Yes! Adaptive wide angle filter. So let's use the adaptive camera wide angle. And you do that by going up to filter and down to adaptive wide angle. So this one's really powerful. It picks up on the metadata of your image and this camera's metadata is there so it Photoshop knows exactly what lens was used and then what kind of distortion is going to happen at the wider angle focal length. Notice what happens when I choose the constraint tool at the top. If I hold down the shift key when I click, see how it changes from cyan to magenta? You see how the line is curving to follow the curve of the column? Because again, Photoshop knows what's going on with the lens's curvature. So I'm going to click and it's going to snap that exact line straight. Let's do the one way over here. I'll choose that line, hold down the shift key. Come all the way down, it's gonna auto curve. I'll click again, and it's gonna automatically straighten those things up. Now it looks like this is still bowing a little, so I'll click a line here and follow that same column all the way down. So it straightened up that line. Let's repeat it over here. Make sure straightened up that line. I'll click, the hor horizontal looks good, but I'll still click across. Okay, there's a little change. Now we've quickly straightened everything up and I can scale this up to get rid of the transparent parts, but I'm losing some things I wanna keep. So instead, I'd rather just go ahead and stay low like that, click OK, and go make my choices in Photoshop. Now I need to turn off the background image so you can see what we're left with. So this is what we're left with. For me, I would give Content Aware Fill a try. Quickest way to do that, Command or Control click on the icon of this layer. Because whenever you do that, it automatically loads a selection. You see the marching ants going all the way around and then hit Command Shift I, or you can go all the way up here to Select and down to Inverse. That's gonna inverse the selection. So now I need to see how the marching ants are, are walking all the way around the transparent areas. Now you need to go up to select, modify, and choose expand. 10 pixels is fine. And look at this area right here. Do you see how it just bit into 
the main image by 10 pixels across, right? Because that's what we want. We need to tell Photoshop sample from this area to fill in this gap. Command zero to fill it in screen. Now remember, you can go up to edit down to fill, or you can hit shift F5 if you're on a Windows machine. You can hit shift delete if you're on a Mac. Any of those options are going to bring up the fill dialog box and just toggle open the contents. If you don't see content aware already there, select it, check color adaptation if it's not already checked, then leave everything else at normal and 100% and just click OK. And let's see how it does. Six and a half hours later. I gotta say, looking up here, I'll hit Command or Control D to deselect, or again, you can come up to select and then choose deselect, but keyboard shortcuts really make you so much faster. So over here, it looks pretty good. Over here, I got a little bit of uh, curvature that's a tiny bit weird, but not totally weird, and a little bit of weirdness here. Again, at this point, I got to keep a lot more of the image than I would have. I'll hit C for the crop tool, and I can just manually crop it to my taste. I'd probably crop out these people anyway, because I don't like these people. Uh, they're distracting. Let's keep it focused here. Hit enter. There we go. Now let's see where we were to see the difference. I'll turn that back on. Turn this one off. So we gave up a bit of the foreground, but it's still a nice shot. Yes! Adobe Camera Raw Geometry tab. So now let's use Adobe Camera Raw. I'm back on the background layer. I'll hit Command or Control J to duplicate it. I'll pull it to the very top. Now I'm going to go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Inside of this dialog box, I'm going to open up the Geometry tab. Here's how it may look when you first get there. These are all your work tabs. Just go down to geometry and use the upright tool. And chances are, since again, Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw can read the metadata, I can probably get a great solution just by clicking automatic. So let's try that. That's really not bad at all. Now let's see what the vertical only would do. Okay. And let's see what vertical level and horizontal does. Okay. So for me, I think there's a balance between the automatic and the vertical. I think I actually like the look of the automatic a little better. So I'll click OK to come back and I'll turn off the background. Well, first, let's see where we were. So we were here and we got to here. We have these transparent areas that we need to either crop, which for me, I think for this particular image, I would probably crop it. But again, I, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that the, the Adobe Camera Raw automatic tends to make things a little skinny. Notice it kept a lot more of the foreground above and beyond the adaptive wide angle filter, but it tends to narrow subjects a bit. So I find for it to visually look nice, I'll hit Command or Control T and I'll hold down the Shift key so that I can, I can intentionally skew the aspect ratio because essentially I want to stretch the image a little bit from this side and this side. And I feel like that looks more like the original scene. And that's probably as much stretching as I can do. I'll hit enter and then the crop tool is already activated. So I would just slide that in to crop out those transparent parts. Hit enter and we came from here. So for me, the Adobe Camera Raw and then the stretch is my favorite method to really mathematically kind of nail it pretty sharp. Now notice it's not 100%, is it? What do you mean? What do I mean by that? Well, look up here. The columns are still converging. They're just not converging as much. Now here's the interesting thing. You can stack techniques on top of each other. So now that we've cropped this and I had delete crop pixels check, so literally what we cropped is gone. I can now hit Command or Control T to go back to that first manual method. I'll come over here and just pull this over and hold the commander control key and just pull pull this outside corner. If I want this to be perfect or near perfect, I can try. Hold the commander control key and click on this outside corner and just drag it out until it looks straight. Enter. So now I've used two techniques plus a stretch to fix those converging lines. Here's where we were, which is still an interesting shot. And now here's where we are. But I just wanted to show you three ways with some customization of, of stacking the ways to get the best image correction for converging lines in your architecture architectural images. I hope this helps. Take care. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>